In this lesson, we will look at an example and how to apply the Gram-Schmidt process to compute an orthogonal basis of a subspace defined by the span of two vectors in R3. Let the set of vectors containing vectors V sub one through V sub m be a basis for a subspace W of Rn. If the set of vectors containing the vectors U sub one through U sub m is an orthogonal basis for the same subspace, then the following formulas apply in order to find the orthogonal basis. Notice vector u sub one is equal to vector v sub one. Vector u sub two is equal to vector v sub two minus a scalar multiple of vector u sub one, where the scalar is a quotient of these dot products. Vector u sub three is equal to vector v sub three minus a scalar multiple of vector u sub one minus a scalar multiple of vector u sub two. And again, notice how these scalars are the quotients of the dot products given. And the pattern continues. So let's take a look at an example. We're asked to find an orthogonal basis, which is the set containing the vectors u sub one and u sub two for w, where w is equal to the span of the set containing the vectors v sub one and v sub two, where vector v sub one is the vector one, one, zero, and vector v sub two is equal to the vector one, one, one. So let's go ahead and set this up on the next slide. Because w is the span of two vectors, we only need to use these first two formulas given by the Gram-Schmidt process. So to begin, vector u sub one is equal to vector v sub one, which equals the vector one, one, zero. Next, vector u sub two is equal to vector v sub two minus vector v sub two dot vector u sub one divided by vector u sub one dot vector u sub one times vector u sub one. So to begin, we have vector v sub two, which is the vector one, one, one. And then for the scalar, we have vector u sub two, which is the vector one, 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 dot vector u sub one, which is the vector we just found here, the vector one, one, zero. And then we have divided by vector u sub one, dot vector u sub one, which is the vector one, one, zero, dot the vector one, one, zero. And then we have times vector u sub one, which again is a vector one, one, zero. So determining the dot products, in the numerator we have one times one plus one times one plus one times zero, which is equal to two. In the denominator we have one times one plus one times one plus zero times zero, which is also two. So again we have vector v sub two minus one times the vector one, one, zero, simplifying vector u sub two is the vector zero, zero, one. Now that we know vector u sub one and vector u sub two, we have the orthogonal basis. The orthogonal basis is the set containing the vectors one, one, zero, and zero, zero, one. And we can check the dot product just to verify these two vectors are orthogonal. Notice how the dot product is zero. Before we take a look at this graphically, if we go back up to vector u sub two, geometrically we replaced vector v sub two with the part of vector v sub two that is perpendicular to the line equal to the span of the vector v sub one. So now let's take a look at this graphically. To begin, the two blue vectors are the vectors v sub one and v sub two, and the span of the two blue vectors is the plane, which is a subspace w. So to find an orthogonal basis, we first let vector u sub one equal vector v sub one, which is this red vector here. And then to determine vector u sub two, we take the part of vector v sub two that is perpendicular to the line containing the vector v sub one or u sub one, which would be this line here. So we can think of projecting vector v sub two onto the orthogonal complement of the line, which will give us the vector u sub two, which would be this second red vector here. So again, this red vector is the part of vector v sub two that is perpendicular to the line containing the vector v sub one or the vector u sub one. And notice how the span of the two red vectors would still be the plane or the subspace W. I hope you found this helpful.